As trading began, two men quickly emerged as front runners, Yuri Gagarin and German Titov. Both pilots were subjected to totally unexpected experiences. I'm a pilot, and when I'm flying, if I want to make a loop during a flight, I make a loop. If I finish a loop, I finish a loop. I can understand that. But here they put you in a centrifuge, and it's pressing and pressing you. You sit there like a guinea pig. Physical endurance was not the only factor. The men's ability to withstand loneliness of space was tested in a specially constructed isolation chamber. The most important thing was the isolation there. I convinced the doctors to let me take in a book of poetry by Pushkin. I learned it off by heart, as there was nothing else to do. Исчезло счастье юных лет, как на лугах ваш легкий след. Titov's links with the intelligentsia would later have an unexpected and dramatic effect on the decision as to who would be first into space. Until the final days before the launch, the odds seemed to be in Titov's favor. General Nikolai Kamanin was Korolev's right-hand man and head of cosmonaut training. He kept a diary during those crucial days. On the 5th of April 1961, he wrote, I've been increasingly occupied by a thought. Whom, Titov or Gagarin, should we choose for the flight? Both of them are excellent characters, although over the last few days, I've been hearing increasingly more opinions favoring Titov. My faith in him is also increasing. But others knew that Gagarin had an even more powerful supporter. Alexei Leonov was one of those pilots chosen to be in the final 20. Although he was not chosen to be one of the last six trainees, he was destined to become the first man to walk in space. He knew that, importantly, Gagarin had impressed Korolev himself. But during the 20 or 30 minutes, uh, Yuri Gagarin and Korolev speaking only together. Uh, it was a situation where Korolev forgot about all uh, cosmonauts and astronauts. Korolev responded warmly to Gagarin's openness and was touched by the respect he showed as he removed his shoes before entering the training capsule. But the final selection had as much to do with where they came from as with what they could do. Titov was just as well prepared, but it was their social backgrounds that played the decisive role. Titov was the son of a teacher, and Gagarin was the son of a working peasant. I thought it should be Gagarin. Why? Because he was brought up in a working-class farming family. A farmer's son. Mother was a farmer. Father was an ordinary labourer. But who am I? For the Soviets, Gagarin was the perfect choice. Bright, quick-witted and charming, he was living proof that under communism, anyone, even the son of a peasant family, could succeed. From the very beginning, Gagarin's role as a hero was as much about what he represented as what he achieved. Kamanin summoned Yuri Alexeyevich and me and said, Yuri is appointed. Titov is the stand-in pilot. So I was stand-in. I don't know whether I should talk about this. There were stories in the media that I kissed and embraced Yuri. It's all rubbish. Of course I knew that I was just as well prepared. I was just as capable. The Air Force Command recommends Senior Lieutenant Yuri Gagarin for the first space flight. And it has decided to appoint Herman Titov as backup pilot. 
Oleg Ivanovsky was one of the principal designers of the Vostok capsule that was to carry Gagarin into space. Of course, Titov was very proud, and because of his character, this was a real blow. He was very upset, very upset without a doubt. You can see this if you watch the film. I wanted to be the first. The fact is that Yuri was chosen. Many years have passed by. It was the correct decision, because Yuri turned out to be a man loved by everyone. 